Hello and welcome to my class on the Master Woodsman Fire class. This is part two of the fire series. In part one we dealt with the fire kit itself. We talked about that the fire kit, just to review right quickly, should have three sources of ignition, two of which that produce flame. You can have an additional, but at least two that produce flame like matches and a lighter. And then you can also have another source like a ferro rod, most common, and I throw in a burning lens. So that's four sources in mine. Next you need a source of tinder that you carry with you. At least two forms can be used when wet. I carry fat lighter and a processed wax disc type or a fire straw. Both of those work when wet. Then there's the dry fluffy tinder. Now in this video we're going to talk in depth about the tinder itself. Now, tinder is the transition where we go from our ignition source over to our kindling and then into our fuel source. Okay? Because as I mentioned in the first one, fire is heat, oxygen, fuel. If any of those three are in the wrong proportion, it collapses. So we have to have the heat envelop and create the saturation point where combustion can take place. So we have a spark, let's say, from our ferro rod. It needs to land into some material that is so small and so fine and dry that that 3,000 or 2,000 or whatever degree spark it is, as it lands on that, it instantly saturates the heat level and brings it up to combustion level and combustion begins right then. That it's such an, an overmatching of the material that it can generate that heat that it starts feeding and starts this complex chemical reaction of fire. The bigger our tinder is, the greater the heat that's necessary to overmatch it and bring it up to such a temperature. So we're going to go through individual components here in a minute, but right now let's just talk, stay in the generals. Something that's producing a spark or a coal, such as a burning lens, needs to be extremely fine, tight together, so that it doesn't have to make a big jump. That heat is so close fiber to fiber that it can go to the next like a wick and telegraph out. The saturation spreads. If it's too airy, it can't heat and jump and heat and jump. So a densely fibrous mass, which we commonly call a bird's nest, because it looks a lot like a bird's nest, of fine material that's been processed and put together. Bird's nests are our tender of choice when we're catching a spark or we're using a burning lens. They can also ignite by flame, but this is when the, the, the tender bundle and the bird's nest are different. The bird's nest is a spark or some sort of coal. So if, I'm, if I've, I've got a hot coal that I'm trying to pick up and put in and wrap around and blow back to life, I want a bird's nest, okay? Now a tinder bundle is much bigger and coarser material because it's going to take flame and flame is going to ignite this. Could it be done with a ferro rod? Yeah, but it's really you're, you're, you're hedging your bet the wrong way. You're, you're making it more difficult than it needs to be. That's the reason our fire kit represents three different ignition sources and three different tenders because of that, because it's what are the conditions right now, as we spoke of in the first video. Is it extremely cold and damp and wet? If everything is damp and wet, I'm not even going to look at a ferro rod or burning lens. I'm going to go straight to flame because I need to overmatch my tenders, my kindlings, all that stuff is going to be wet, so I've got to push the overmatch of the heat. I've just got to go straight to flame. On the other hand, if it's bone dry conditions, everything is just beautifully dry and it crumbles up almost to dust in your hand, absolutely a burning lens or a ferro rod strike and you're going to get some. Because in those conditions, low humidity, dryness, dry air, 
you are at a position where you can. Now, you guys on the West Coast, this is something you face because in those parts of the country, after everything has dried out so severely and we know about all of California and the, and the West is burning, you can even think about a spark and it goes. On the other hand, in the Pacific Northwest or in the Eastern Woodlands, whenever it's been snowing, it's wet, it's damp, one of the misty, foggy rains that's been going on for days, and it's just saturated everything, just go to flame. Don't even, you know, yes, you can if you've got the time and the, the inclination to challenge yourself. Yes, go ahead and try to make up and do it with a ferro rod. But always in the back of your mind, know that when it's for real, go to a flame. You know, it's wonderful to have the ability and the skill and the talent to use that ferro rod. And I prefer to use the ferro rod as much as possible. But when the conditions are bad, I'm going to go ahead and go to flame. Because my job here is to build a fire to get warmth so I can get some food in me. So I can do it. My entire job isn't just to spend two hours trying to build a fire. See, I want to use my maximum resources in the minimum amount of time because I've got other things to do. And so building a fire should not be a burden. Okay? Tenders. And I'm going to draw this out on the board for you in a minute. We're going to go back to my study. And we're going to set it out on board. And we're going to do the lesson plan. We're going to talk about each individual. But as I just touched on, a bird's nest is really fluffy and light. And it's very tightly packed together, fine fibers to allow that propagation. A tender bundle is a bunch of dried material bowed around and formed into a yoke or into a tight ball where a flame can hit it and it will spread up through it and you can turn it and rotate it and put it up underneath a fire lay to ignite it quickly. I like in certain times I like to use a tender bundle and matches. Especially in windy conditions, I go ahead and get my fire lay set up, and then I get, you know, hunker down out of the wind best I can, I strike, and I take that match, one of those lifeboat matches, and I shove it into the middle of the tender bundle. Well, now the tender bundle is acting as its own windbreak, right? And that match is burning nice and hot, and it ain't going to go out. It's going to keep cooking. Now I can transfer it up underneath my fire lay, hands-free, so to speak, and I'd have to worry so much about the wind. I can take my hat and shield a little wind over here if I need to, to get it going, get it cooking, get it running. Especially in wind conditions, I want to pack my stuff a little tighter because due to air, pressure, wind, and we'll get into this in the next video, I know I've got plenty of oxygen coming in this fire. In dead still conditions, I would not do that because it might smother it, not enough airflow. Remember that three-legged stool of heat, oxygen, and fuel. If there's not enough air coming in, it's smothering. So, but I've got a 10 mile an hour wind, 15 mile an hour wind pushing this side. Trust me, there's plenty of oxygen there. I want to start on the uphill side so the wind is blowing my fire into my fuel instead of away from it. So the fire is like a wick burning in to go. Tender bundles are utilized for those sorts of things where I need a big bulky thing. Now, Generalize right quick. How big should a bird's nest be? A bird's nest in really good conditions? Baseball. A bird's nest in really bad conditions? So softball all the way up to a soccer ball. <laughs> I want a big one. I want something that whenever I get, I can hold it and use it to shield and have a little fire in the middle of it building up. So bigger is better. Many times when students are starting out, they make the mistake of going too small because you've looked at someone you respect, you've watched them, and he comes out there and he's got a, a tender bun, uh, he's got a bird's nest the size of a golf ball. And he strikes and gets going. Man, he had no problem building a fire with that. What were the conditions? What was his experience? See? The more dirt time you get, the more experience you get, the more you can understand how big of this I need for these conditions. So in 
very cold conditions, even if they're dry, I'm going to have a bigger uh, bird's nest than I would have in bone dry hot conditions. I can get away with a smaller one because my air temperature is warm. Say so I don't need to generate so many BTUs to try to overmatch and get my kindling going. A tender bundle, how big? Well, I like a tender bundle about the size of my two fists. That's how big I want a basic one. I want bigger in bad conditions and I'll go smaller in really nice conditions. If it's dry and it's hot, but it's not that humid and everything says, I'll use one the size of my fist. But what about if it's, man, it's been raining for two days and I've, I've managed to get this. I want one the size of my two fists, if not bigger, because I want it to catch. And once I get this burning, this is the wick that is gonna take from my ignition source over to my kindling. Now, let us speak on what is kindling. Kindling is the transition between the tender and the fuel. And it starts out with small matchstick size sticks, can be long, but that diameter, and then grows in size up to thumb or slightly bigger in size. That is kindling. We can make this where we all we've got is larger wood. I can split it down to smaller pieces and shave it down to smaller pieces. And then fuel. Fuel is anything from the size of your wrist up. Okay. That is something I'm going to use to actually feed the fire. Once I've made the transition to fuel, all that other stuff is gone. Now I just put bigger logs on there. Once I get a big bed of coals, I can put green wood on it. And it'll smoke, but it will burn, see. That's, we'll get into fire about how to, to run a fire, you know, how to camp a fire, how to bank a fire, and etc. That's the next video. But in this introduction, I wanted to tell you where we're going. And so, in the basic concept is this. From our fire kit, we have three sources of ignition, minimum. We have three sources of tender, minimum, that we're carrying with us. Now, out here in the wild, to save the tender that I'm carrying for emergency conditions, I want to gather as much of this tender as I can, okay, based upon my conditions. We're going to talk about that in depth in a few minutes. But I'll gather my tender. What source am I going to be using? Well, it's not raining. It's kind of cold. It's not whatever. I, I, I'm going to try my, I'm going to do my fair rod. Bird's nest. Okay. You know, it's real nice, bright, and sunny, and everything's kind of dry. And, you know, I think I'm going to use my burning lens. Bird's nest. No, it's kind of damp. You know, we've had a couple of days of rain. Everything's a little misty and everything and etc. Tender bundle flame, match or lighter, see, you will assess your conditions and then apply the proper fire technique. Do not get locked in to, I have to build a fire with a ferro rod. I have to build a fire with matches. You should practice with all of them in various conditions so that you have a working knowledge. Learning how to do it will make a big difference when you've got to do it because only dirt time is going to teach you. Now I've already had some people in comments have said Blackie what about primitive fire methods like bow drill and etc. Those are absolutely viable in the right conditions with the right experience but that's going to be the, beyond the scope of this discussion because that requires skill and practice and timing and even then all the primitive methods of bow drill, pump drill, um, fire plow, etc., are generating a coal. You got to make a bird's nest for that to be able to catch that because that's a coal. None of them produce flame, they produce a coal. And so, if I'm in conditions where I'm not even going to use a ferro rod because it's so wet and it's so damp and everything else, and I got to use a, a bird's nest for that, I'm just going to use a tender bundle. Going from a coal to a tender bundle, my 
bow drill set trying to make a tender bundle work, you're right back. So you see that's the break in the chain. You assess the conditions. If it is a good skill to have. I practice on a bow drill. I do not teach a bow drill because of my wet, damp environment. It's a very high failure rate. And find I live in a semi-tropical jungle of lower Alabama. So finding the dry wood most of the year that's got the proper moisture content where I can make a bow set is a hunt. I gotta hunt for it. Because everything's damp and moist. You know, it's dead. How dead is it? How dry is it? We're in a wet environment down here. So even a tree that's been dead six months sitting there probably has got too high a water count. Or it's been two or three years. I mean, what you see behind me is what I'm dealing with. So, yes, I've done it. But it was. it's always, you got to hunt, you know, to find the right wood, make the bow, etc. In the time it takes me to do that, I could have had a fire going, had a meal going, I could be on my way, have a camp set up. I can easily build a debris shelter faster than I can make up a bow drill set. And so to me, yes, it's a very viable skill, but it's also a skill that you have to want to practice, and it's one you should, I fully recommend everybody should learn it, but never rely on it strictly as your only source of fire, because you're going to have more failures than you're going to have successes especially in the early days. And so always have that fire kit ready to go. When this didn't work, I can shift back to that because of the conditions. Okay? Now, let's shift back to my study. I'll get up the whiteboard, and we'll start laying out all the details to better understand how tinder fits into this system of fire making. Okay, whiteboard time. Now, let's talk about the order of operations, okay? It's a step up to a pyramid, okay? You have first step, and that's going to be your ignition, okay? Your second step is going to be your tender. Your third step is going to be your kindling. And finally, your last step is going to be fuel. It's hot enough now you can put basically anything on it and it's going to cook. So each one steps up to it. This is the way the fire should progress, but it's not the way we lay it out. I'll explain that in a moment. But remember it is your ignition has to make the transition to the tender. It's got to step up. Because if it doesn't make that step up, it falters right here at this stage. Each one of these requires a step below it to happen. Because if it doesn't, then you're going to stumble. It's not going to be able to make that jump up. So from my ignition source, I go directly to the tender. The tender is going to be something that takes that spark and then we'll propagate it out to saturate the kindling and get the kindling to ignite. From kindling, once I've got kindling going, then I can put major fuel on there and have the fire, okay? But these three right here, ignition, tender, and kindling, are the basis of this, okay? This is where we're gonna take that first inkling of that we're building a fire and we're going to step up okay so the tender it, are we using an ignition source that is a spark or a coal or are we using flame okay now this is the order of operations of the tender and the ignition but these steps lead to a pyramid. You're going to have your fuel and then you're going to have a layer of tinder. Okay? Then you're going to have kindling. Then you're going to have more fuel on top. So this 
large fields, only two pretty good sized logs, get it up off the ground. Let air get underneath it. Let the heat rise up and therefore ignite what's above it. Reach saturation. So it's kind of like acting like a chimney. So here's going to be the big logs that are going to be the basis later on. Okay. Next is going to be the layer of tinder. This is going to catch the small sparks, the light flame, the whatever I've just put in here, and it's going to start propagating it and spreading it out sideways and upward. That heat begins to rise, and the kindling sitting there is being warmed up before the flame ever gets to it. See, we've got to saturate. We've got to warm the air. We've got to bring up the saturation layer to get to the combustion temperature. And then once it's going, there's more fuel on top. As this burns out, it drops down onto the fuel down here, and this becomes a bed of coals right here that is self-feeding, and then we just add fuel, okay? That's the order of operations. Now, let's talk about which kind of tender we need, okay? There are, to my mindset, there are three that I primarily use. There is the bird nest. There is the tender bundle. And then there's the hybrid. Now, hybrid, I'll get to that in a minute. The bird nest is fine, hair fine, small fibers that are going to be taking a spark or a coal. Think flint and steel. Think bow drill coal. Think anything that produces a spark like a ferro rod. That's going to be spark or coal going to a bird's nest because it's got to be finer and more processed to guarantee the capturing of that coal, that heat source, that ignition source, and then propagating it out. With the tender bundle is going to be flame. Okay, either a lighter or a match or something else that produces actual flame. Okay. That's what a tender bundle is. This does not have to be nearly as processed as that does. So if time and effort, tender bundle and a lighter or a match. Poof, you got fire going. But if I've got the time, I've got the resources, and I've got the, man, it's just laying right there. I can then generate a bird's nest and use my ferro rod. In the right conditions, I can get a ferro rod to catch a tender bundle if it's a small, fine tender bundle. And that is a hybrid, and that's this. This combines both of them. And I will show you one of those in a minute, but what it is is I'm going to create a tender bundle. And I'm going to bow it in half so it's like that with a pocket in the middle of it. And then that pocket, I'm going to put my finest processed stuff into it. So it's not truly a bird's nest but it's got fine enough and enough fibrous material that it could possibly catch a spark in the right conditions if it's not super cold, super damp or whatever. Where I think I got a good fighting chance, then I can try a ferro rod into it, but it's got, it, the tender bundle acts like a handle to hold this super fine stuff in one location so that when I do go and ignite it, it can catch the spark, get going, and then as I turn it, and we'll talk about that and show that in just a minute, we let that heat go up and propagate. It turns from a sort of a quasi-bird nest into a, instantly into a tender bundle. And I roll up and I use that to ignite, but we're going to show that in just a minute. But so, bird's nest, tender bundle, or a hybrid, depending on conditions. Okay? Now, let's talk about unnatural tenders for just a second. This is as good a place as any to do it. Okay. Natural and untent. Natural. natural meant anything you pick up off of the ground that naturally grows. Grasses, barks, fibers, etc. So like bark, grasses, uh, flower tops, 
unnatural tenders, trash, rubber, anything flammable, man-made. Okay, so like I said, uh, birch bark, great fire source. And those up north that have a lot of birch trees where you can just peel it off the tree and it's like it's been soaked in gas. You take your knife and just shave it just a little bit, hit it with a spark, catches a spark, it goes. Fat wood that I have all over the place, and I'll show you that again in just a minute. You just shave that a little bit, hit it with a spark, boom, you got fire. Super simple. Tulip poplar bark, processed heavily, can be made into a bird's nest or a tender bundle, depending on how much processing you do. Uh, flower tops, bushy tops, dry, grassiest, fibrous material that I can just crush up fine and utilize. Those are natural tenders. How about unnatural tenders like trash? Trash. Waxed cardboard. How many times are you going down the dirt road or whatever and there's styrofoam cups? Styrofoam cups, break it up, hit it with a match, it burns like it's soaked in gasoline. Don't breathe the fumes. It's going to be black, rancid smoke. But that those plastic cups just burn, baby. Hit them with a, a, a match or hit them with a lighter and they burn like crazy. Great source of tender. Cardboard, waxed cardboard like uh, boxes for beer boxes or soda boxes or for takeout to fry things. These are wax coated to keep them kind of rigid and hold up for the time you're going to need fries in them or whatever. But when torn down and you tear it, they make those ragged edges like that that will catch a spark if you shred it up fine. Rubber, like inner tube, rubber insulation. I mean, anything like that that's got some sort of petroleum base will burn and makes a good tender. It's a transition, remember. All we care about here is heat. I want something I can ignite in some way to make the step from ignition up to that kindling. And if a piece of a rubber inner tube will set fire with a match or, excuse me, duct tape, electrical tape, something with adhesive that'll burn, something that's been treated or garbage or whatever, all I care about is to step up. Once I get kindling burning, this doesn't matter anymore. Now I'm interested in fuel, okay? Okay guys, as you can see down this dirt road right here, all that dried weeds, bushy tops, etc. This is nothing but a harvesting source. Just walk along with the bag and gather up tenders. We keep an eye out for anything that's fluffy, dry, and dead, well dead. It snaps when you grab it or you crush it. Okay. So let's do a quick review now that we've done the, the classroom section. Let's get in some hands-on now, okay? The order of operations is I have an ignition source, which from my fire kit I should have a choice of three depending on conditions. I have a tender source, which my fire kit gives me three sources as well as what I'm about to gather here off the land, okay? Next, I want to take and create a fire. So I'm gonna gather fuel. I'm gonna gather kindling. Kindling is small stuff like pencil, finger, thumb, something like that. Tender, tender's the hard part. I need to find dry, fluffy tender. What fuel source? Well, in these conditions, I'm gonna be using a ferro rod. Okay, so I need to make a bird's nest or a hybrid if the conditions are right. We're going to show that in just a second. Okay, I get all of that together and I start organizing it. Now I get to the actual processing. So we're going to just, for the sake of argument, say that I'm about to build a fire and I've already found my fuel. I've already busted up and got my kindling. Now I need to find my tinder. So let's go look for some tinder. Okay, as you can see along the water's edge down here, you got quite a bit of this dry grass. Now, it's number one, it's standing up. That's good. All this pine straw and stuff on the ground is no-no because it's wet, it's holding moisture. But this is standing up. That means it dries faster and it's a better chance. You come over here and you look. We've got this nice big 
clump right here and then those seed tops. That's what I'm going to harvest. I'm going to show you how we're going to create a tender bundle from that. So I come up and first, it's vertical. That tells me there's no standing water on it. I'm going to grab it and I'm going to bend it with my finger and see if it snaps. And it does. All right, that tells me it's dry. So I'm going to get down here at the ground level and I'm going to start breaking off these layers. Now this is actually stems more than anything else. And that's fine. Now see, this is just little stems and sticks. There is some leaves and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap off these outliers and I'm going to lay them back down in the main bundle. Okay, just like this. Now, I'm going to take that bundle, and I'm going to grab it in the middle, and I'm going to bend it in half. See that snaps? I'm thickening it up as I go. Now, i got about a handful of small, dry sticks. Okay? Now, I need something fluffy to put with this, and that's going to be those sage-type grasses right there. Now, I'm going to come up. I don't want the whole stem. I just want to come up and grab it and give it a little tug. And whatever will snap off easily in my hand, that's what I want. I don't want to go too far to the bottom because I'll get too much root. And that becomes more of a kindling than a tender. And it'll also become less useful to me. Now this is going to provide the teeny tiny little sticks of the tender to make the transition up. But this is the fibrous. But see how open and fibrous that is? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down the sticks. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to grip it. I'm going to fold it in half. Fold it in half again. And then I'm going to start doing this. Working it. Just like that. I'm going to get it and rotate it and twist it. I'm creating more surface area. I'm breaking it up, getting those fine little fine. See that dust coming off? That's good stuff. I don't want to lose too much of that. So I'm taking my thumb, pushing in the middle. I start crushing it in until I've created a bird's nest of sorts. Now them sticks that I first got, they're going to come up here and they're going to be on the back side of this. And I'm going to kind of use them as a framework. Now I want something really fluffy in the middle. So I'm going to look for the smallest little tops. Something that's more like a flower top than anything else. Okay. There's this weed top that's all these heads on it. Like cotton balls, that downy type stuff. That's what I'm hunting. I'm going to come up here and right into that bowl section I just made of the hybrid. I'm going to bear down and I'm going to pull them heads off. Right in there. Try not to knock off no more of that fine stuff than I have to. Just keep cracking it up and putting it in the middle. Now remember we said a bird's nest needs to be fairly dense. You don't want the heat to have to go very far to travel to find the next place to spark. Now that main stem, break it up and put it on the back side. Now I take my thumb, and you see I'm kind of pushing it in there into those grasses, working it in. Now I've made a fist size ball, tender ball, with that little downy light stuff in the middle of it. This would be a what I would call a hybrid because it is a bird's nest in the middle smaller bird's nest but it's also a tender bundle on the outside now from this I will strike in a minute and get a spark to catch and ignite into this and then I would be able to rotate it and let the flame go up through those sticks and have a fire ready to do it so this took me what five minutes or less to walk around and pick this up what if the conditions were a lot wetter than they are right now. Then I gotta hunt 
for more of this. But rather than spending hours trying to find this stuff, that's why I carry a supply in my fire kit, remember. Now, let's say I get up there and I take my, my ferro rod and I start sparking and it just ain't catching for whatever reason. I've got plenty of tiny fibers right there for that spark to go into and catch and start the process. But maybe it's it's got too much moisture for whatever reason. Well, that's when I'll go into my tender set that I carry in my fire kit and pinch off like a golf ball sized piece of that bone dry stuff and put it here in the middle and utilize it. So let's get up here and let's ignite this right quick. Now here's that hybrid tender bundle I just made. I got sticks on the back, hence thin, and I got a, a fibrous little tender and then I've got a really fine in the middle. Now I'm going to pull out my ferro rod and my knife. Get my sparks going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand down here on the deck right next to it. And I'm going to put that ferro rod into the bundle itself. Okay? So when I shave down, I'm actually pushing shavings to the bottom of that rod and I'm going to ignite them. Okay, now you see I've got smoke coming right there. I do have it caught. Now I want to take and push it down and in and roll this around it. All right, too much moisture. It's been raining several days. I wanted to wait till today to show you that it can be difficult. It doesn't have to be automatic. See, there is it is catching a spark, then it goes out because there's too much moisture in the air, and this still has even though it's standing and it's drying, it snaps. There's still because it rained for several days. There's a moisture content in this that's dampening it down. We're gonna try that one more time. Put it down there. Open up them fibers a little bit. Now I'm watching it, and the actual spark is landing, and then it glows for a second. Actually, I get a little bit of flame for a second, and then it, just like that. It tells you it's way too damp, okay? So now what we're we gonna do? Well now, we're gonna go to our kit and we bring out some of our bone dry tender that we already had. Okay, now we bring out our fire kit, and we open it up and we come down in here and get some of our bone dry tender that we're carrying. Now since I've already got all this other stuff, all I need is really like a piece about like a golf ball. I'm gonna sh open this up, and get some air. It said dust coming off where it's so dry. And I'm gonna do it like that and open it up, get air in there. I'm gonna work that into my pre-made up tender bundle like that my thumb making a hole in there just like that now i'm going to take and utilize my tender bundle on this table so i don't bang my knuckles on that concrete all right push that right down in there bear down and pull out just like that. Now we got it going. Now just roll it over. Turn it over. Hold it up, let air get to it, see? All those little sticks and all right there. Lift it up, make sure it's got air. Quick, clean, and easy. Now, see how the sticks, how the grasses are working together. 
are flaring out and dancing around because the way it's tight enough, it holds the coal. And the predominant wind is driving the fire into it. There's still some that is not burned right there. Even though that was damp, and we know it was because it's rained for the last three days, it was hard soaking rains. But once the heat is generated and that overmatch occurs where it's raising the temperature to the point of the combustion, it's drying itself out. There's not hardly any smoke coming off of it, relatively. See how that little setup has given me this long, and all those little sticks are now catching and burning. That's enough time for my kindling to get going, for to dry out a little bit of damp tinder that may be in my fire lay. Give it time to do it. So that got what, a minute and a half, maybe two minutes of flame. I still got flame coming off of this. All from that little bitty tinder bundle. Okay. Right in here, there's some sage. It looks brown, but it's not dead. Because when I grab it and pull on it, it doesn't want to move, it doesn't want to break. When you grab a hold of what you think is, and you tug on it, and it don't want to break, it's probably not fully dead. There's too much moisture content in it. But man, this is brown right here. This should be good. That one snaps. This one don't. So that one is. That just pulled right out. That one snapped right off. That one's not. That one is. That one is not. Things grow. Many of these big leafy things like this that die at the end of the summer and into the fall grow in cycles. And so they're not all the exact same age. So this is actually where it'll snap. It's dry. But the one growing right next to it was still a little bit green. Went to tug on it and it didn't want to come up. So that tells me just don't even waste my time. Keep going. Keep looking for the big dry stuff. Grab it and give it a little tug. If it just pops off in your hand, it's dry. Add that to the bundle. If it doesn't and you got to tug a little, you're just adding smoke to your fire. Because I can mix that in, but when I put the fire to it, what's going to create? Steam, the water content, and that's going to dampen down the bundle. That's going to dampen down the fixtures, see, and it's going to create more smoke. Because that's the steam and the unburned gas is coming off of it. So it's really going to be detrimental. Only grab the good stuff. Stay with the good stuff. Now let's try this weed next to this tree. It snaps when I go to pull on it. And I'm just gonna do like that and I'm gonna take these long ones and snap them off. Don't be in a hurry. Go ahead and take the time and grab the long fibers off. The smaller stuff, put them together. Most people wanna grab it and start crushing. You lose a lot of the good ones and we want air currents between them. Just snap it off, fold it together, and that one right there in the center shaft is not dead. I had tugged too hard. Move back over here. That one ain't. That one is. That one is. That one is. Even on the same plant, you can find variety. little bend if it snaps take it if it wants to bend leave it because the plant is growing and shedding layers that it no longer needs okay now I've got that much off that one plant let's keep going right here at the water's edge you got all this sage that's probably not going to be a good source because the water. 
still sucking water. Even though that looks brown and dead, I still see a wisp of green every so often. If it's right up against the water, it's probably got too much moisture content. So kind of stay away from the water, right at the water's edge, okay? Okay, leaves. If you take a leaf and crush it, that's got too much moisture. If I can do that and it just crumbles to powder, yes. But if I can bend it up and let go and it's still there, too much moisture content. Just going to add steam. Okay. Now I've created a tender bundle. These are all fine little sticks with a little bit of fluffy top in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it. I'm going to give it a break. So it's like that. And then I'm going to give it a little twist to break even more of the fibers and get it, okay? Now, I'm going to make a little pocket right here. This is fold in half. That's where I'm going to put my flame to ignite this. Now, I can either use a lighter, turning it up and holding it in there like that, or I can use, in real windy conditions, I like to use a match. Let me show you how the match works. I would get in a sheltered location as much as I could to get the wind off of me. Have my fire pit, my fire lay ready to go. This is the ignition. Ignition is the last step. I would already have some tinder in my fire lay. And we'll get that in the next episode when we're talking about fire lays. So that this tinder ignites that tinder. Now it's going to say it's really bad conditions. And I'm going to use a match. I'm going to use a uh, lifeboat match. Get my striker out. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get down here close. I'm going to take my match. I'm going to strike it and I'm going to shove it into this. Just as soon as it gets going. Just like that. Now I'm hands free, right? I can turn and manipulate and that match is going to keep right on burning. So you rotate it and let the wind catch it. And once it gets going good, just lay it down. This would be slid up underneath my fire. Now you see smoke coming off of it. That tells you a lot of moisture. See, it's actually so much moisture there that's actually steam that's uncombusted gases is what smoke is but the wind i'm utilizing the wind to drive it through so i got it ignited with that match and i turned it and let the wind catch it i almost let it blow out i had to turn it back for just a second and then bring back so the wind caught it and went to blowing it under so that now if this was up underneath with that heat going straight up went into my tender on the fire lay that would progress more of this would be put up there as a way of burning uh, get the fire going get it burning hot but see how by striking that and then sticking the match in i had hands free i could help hold a hat and shield it from the strong wind or whatever i ain't got to hold a lighter in place all i got to use is a match that's why matches do have a place in a fire kit. They give you a hands free. That's been what, a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. That finally went out. That should be more than enough time if I've done my job to ignite it. But see, even now, see that isn't even hardly burned. And that one has too much moisture content in it. It was giving off smoke, but it was not burning. All the light stuff that was dry, it's done burned. And what I'm left with is just the smoldering remains that has too much moisture content. That kept it from catching a fire so easily. Okay. Now, what did we just learn by this? I intentionally picked a day when it had been raining. It rained for the last three days, and I'm out here today, and everything is still damp. Yes, it's dry and it snaps, but you saw when I put sparks, 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 and it, uh, uh, like that. You don't learn anything if you just watch me go, 
whoosh, and it's gone. That just proves I knew what I was doing. But it doesn't show you what you need to know. So let's learn how to troubleshoot. And that's the important part in a fire learn is not only the actual act of this is what you do, but when it don't go, that's the, the valuable information. When you've created a tender bundle, when you put a bird's nest in it, or you're working with just a bird's nest, and you strike, whoom, and you're getting good sparks, man. They're going in there, and it just, you hear the, I see a little spark, and there's a little flame, in it, and it just goes out. Moisture content, okay? You'll sit there and wear a ferro rod out because you're trying to dry out your tinder bundle or your bird's nest. But you saw I went into my bone dry that I carry in my fire kit. I think I got it bone. Yeah, I do. I went into my bone dry fire kit that I carry and I brought out just about, oh, the size of a small egg or maybe a golf ball of dry and put in the middle of that and then poosh, whoosh. And there it went because that stuff was usable, but they were just a little too damp. So whenever I added something dry to it to kickstart it and get it going, it caught. And then it worked beautifully. It looked like it was made to do it. A lot of times in, in videos, and I'm not bad-mouthing anybody, guys, okay, but a lot of times I see on these videos of individuals that know what they're doing and they get up there and they're trying to show you how to do it and they have a perfectly set up set when they walk up and they go whoo whoo man it went I can do that too if I take my bird's nest and I spray it with hairspray a couple hours before and let it dry out man you can put a spark in the same zip code man it's going up but that just shows you I knew what I was doing it doesn't show you the technique and that's what we're trying to do here show you the technique because the bottom line is every bit of this is going to be you this is dirt time I cannot tell you okay component A component B component C you absolutely 100% of the time never have a problem you will always 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 have fire I would be lying through my teeth to you experience is what you're missing right now and so what we need to do is show you when it goes right and when it goes wrong. All right? We just showed you. You did your preparation. You created. You put the spark to it, and it was just not going. And it's just not going. That's when you fall back to the fire kit. Bring that out. Get it going. If the conditions were bad, and I had no doubt this is going to be a struggle. You know those two tenders that work when they're wet? How about bringing out one of them fire straws or one of them uh, wax-coated things? Just go ahead and tear it up. We need a fire. It's cold. We're hungry. We need to get a fire going. The sun's dropping. I don't need to mess with this. Immediately go to the flame. Immediately go to a tender that's going to give you it. Let's get the fire going. Okay? Don't spend so much time messing and wasting time building the fire. Okay. A tender bundle is just a group of small thin sticks leaves whatever it's going to be used with flame as you just saw me use that match stick. if it doesn't want to ignite it can be a moisture content you saw at the end of that burn where there were sticks laying there they were barely scorched the water content of those little sticks and those weed reeds or whatever dampened down and kept it from burning. That's the reason you saw that big white smoke coming off of it, too much moisture. I still got it to go, but I knew how to manipulate it. I got it, I processed it, I cracked it up, I shoved that match into it. Could I have used a lighter? Absolutely. I could have held it with a lighter, but that requires two hands. One for the lighter and one for that. And once it gets going, I can lay the lighter down. But with a match, I can strike it, stick it, and pick it up and have both hands free. And I can take my hat to hold the breeze off of it while it's catching. And so matches do have a place. How about your tenders that you're carrying with you? How about the wax tenders or the hunk of fatwood? Fatwood here in my south is everywhere. 
which we call it fat lighter, but it's fat wood or touch wood or lighter wood. And it's just simply the rosiny core of a pine tree. Usually the best ones are the ones that died during the summer. Now those, you can shave them and just hit them with a spark and they're going to go. You hit them with a match, they're going to go. You don't have to process them nearly as far because I can just take a long splinter and I'll show you that in a second and just touch flame to it and baby it's going. We're good to go. Well I can utilize that to my advantage because as I did in an earlier video, let's say you've got a damp condition like it is right now. Everything's damp or wet and I've got a tender bundle and there's just nothing fluffy. Nothing. I can't find anything that isn't just wet. So I, I can make fuzzy sticks, I can whatever to get down to the dry, but it's hard to get it down fine enough to catch it with a spark. So I'm gonna be using flame anyway, right? Well, a piece of fat wood can itself be a big match. What you're gonna do is you're gonna split off a long splinter. And you're gonna take that splinter and you're gonna stick it in the ground or stick it in a stump or whatever. And around the base, shave up some pieces of fat wood and put it around the base of it. Now when I touch a flame to it or hit it with a spark and it ignites, the flame will run up that long piece of fat wood and act like a torch. Now over the top of it, I hold that damp tender bundle. That flame is just licking all over it and slowly rotate it, let it dry it out, let it get going and get that tender bundle to ignite. In my fire lay, I would include hunks of fat wood so that when I transfer it over there or get it going or ignite it right there in the fire with my tinder, I get the transition, that next step from ignition to tinder to kindling. Now, let's talk for just a second about kindling. Kindling starts out as tiny little sticks like stems and stuff of leaves and then goes all the way up to finger size. Thumb size as big as I'm gonna call kindling. After that, it's just small fuel wood. I don't like to spend a lot of time splitting up wood. I'll do it if I have no other choice. But I see a lot of people that want to take their knife and they want to baton a, a, a hunk of a redwood down to match sticks to build a fire. And that's a, yes, you can do it. Man, that's a lot of work. Are you wanting to practice splitting wood or you want to build a fire? You know. I would prefer to just simply take a stick, shave it with my knife down and make a fuzzy stick, make six, eight, ten of those, take a match or a lighter and ignite it and make a pile of them and get them going and get a fire going. Then all that labor of split, keep splitting, keep it finer, keep it finer, keep it finer to try to get what I can just make with a knife making fuzzy sticks and do that. But it, ultimately it's all up to you, it's what you want to do. and how much time you want to spend making a fire. Now, let's, uh, let's talk one more second about the various tenders. You're carrying in your kit two tenders that do not require, uh, they can be wet, and that's probably gonna be a wax disc or like a fire straw or some other man-made tender or organized tender. It could be duct tape, it could be rubber, it could be whatever you've got. Um, let's say you're also carrying fat wood in there, one of those pieces of fat wood like I recommended. From that I can shave multiple times and create a fire. And something that I had, I think I addressed, but I would like to retouch on. There are those that advocate using a magnesium rod. I do not. And I... Um, the magnesium rod to me is a lot of processing. I need to sit there and shave it down fine. It's probably going to dull my knife or dull the back of my knife, me trying to get all these dust off of it. When it ignites, it's going to go whoom, and it's gone. It burns up in just half a second. And so if I don't have a perfectly dry tinder bundle right there or something ready to catch that heat, it's just going to whoo, and I don't get a fire like you saw when I went to do the ferro rod on that one. And it was hitting and there was sparks and there you little, eh, and nothing was happening. My experience with those magnesium bars were it, they were more work than they were 
you know, I'd rather take a piece of fat wood. In five minutes, I can have a piece of fat wood and have a fire going. It, I'll spend 30 minutes trying to get a fire with a magnesium bar because it's so much effort to make it fine enough and then you have to have everything so perfectly set up to catch that spark. Um, it, if you're going to carry a bar, just carry a lighter. I mean, that's just my two cents. Uh, sometimes they can be useful in the right situation, but in my experience, carry a lighter. Okay. I took this piece of fat wood and I took my knife and I split off a long splinter. Okay. The outside of fat wood will oxidize over time. That means it kind of dries out a little bit. So that's the reason I keep mine in a block form like this. So when I knead it and I split it down, I get back down to the still wet, so to speak, very aromatic and therefore more volatile places. Now, when you take this and just put a raw flame on it for just a second. It'll go to burn. And as long as you keep the wind off of it, that black smoke coming off of it, now it'll actually start dripping like napalm as that stuff begins to burn. It'll turn black, it'll start, start sweating, and that flame will work its way up that splinter. As long as you keep it out of the wind, it will keep growing and getting bigger and bigger. I have seen this stuff be underwater 20 years. Take it, shake it off, put a match to it, like, and it'll go burning just like this. And that's a self-fueling fire now because as it's heating it up, those volatile oils are coming out and burning. It light like a candle. And so I got a little bit of a breeze, finally blew it out. But therefore, that right there can be carried for decades and when you need it you can split it and have something like that now what if i had taken and split the full length of this and made a splinter about the size of a number two pencil out of this and then start at the base shave this up because you can shave this very easily with the back of a knife make a pile of shavings and ignited that and let the flame run up it well this becomes a torch with like 10 or 10 or 12 inches of flame coming off of it and that's a fantastic fire igniter when everything around you is wet i have taken a piece like this and split it up into like four pieces because it was life and death we got to have a fire and built my fire lay put this in the middle of it put tinder on top of it as dry as i could find a bunch of firewood made a big log cabin within a teepee on top of that and got on the bottom, ignited it, and went up and had three foot of flame in less than 10 minutes. And been able to dry out and have an effective fire. One of the best resources there is. And it's available at any big box store that sells firewood. Look for it. They'll be have it cut and split into hunks this size in a box. Get you some. This is what I recommend for I always have as a backup.